Right, today we're going to talk about international finance and more specifically exchange rates. Now the first question to ask is what is an exchange rate? Um, what do we mean by that? Uh, we all know that the currencies of different countries have a different value. If I want to go to America, I have to buy American dollars and that value of the dollar changes all every second of the day is going up or down um, and it, it moves now the big question who establishes the value of that dollar um, well in the modern day it's established by the market and we have to go back to our market theory uh, to see how the market works uh, through supply and demand. So the value is established by the, through the laws of supply and demand. For example, we know if the demand goes up for something, the price goes up. So if the demand for dollars goes up, the price of dollars will go up. If America produces fantastic products uh, and suddenly the whole world wants to buy American produce, or maybe they find lots and lots of oil and the whole world wants to buy that oil, they, they have to have dollars. So the demand for dollars will go up and the value will go up. Alternatively, if the American government decides to print lots and lots of dollars and flood the world with dollars, uh, the value of the dollar will go down because supply, we know from the laws of supply and demand, if supply goes up, uh, the value goes down. It's like any market, any market for a product or service. The value of a currency is the same. Um, now, we didn't always have this system. This is called a floating exchange rate system. Uh, in the past, we had a fixed exchange rate system. And for this, to establish the, the level of the currency in a fixed exchange rate system, all the countries got together and agreed, found a consensus to every currency, what value every currency should be. And to enforce the value of each currency, they would guarantee uh, the, the exchange of gold for that particular value, that particular currency is worth that much gold, um, so that would be guaranteed, you know, a dollar could buy that much gold and this was done by agreement and obviously it's a fixed exchange rate, it doesn't change. Um, so, but we live in a world of floating exchange rates now, uh, so the economist needs to understand how these, the, how these exchange rates move. They move by the market, but what influences the market for these? Very important this because um, an exchange rate has a big impact on a country, a country's economy. If the value of American dollars is very high, this means it's difficult for exporters to export to the rest of the world because dollars, their produce will be so expensive. And then it will mean American jobs uh, are difficult to find because they're, they're not very competitive. The industry is not very competitive. But it also means that Americans can buy uh, lots of foreign produce cheaply in the shops so it means inflation rate is down so you know it, it has a big impact on the economy on these two very important economic indicators inflation and, and unemployment as well as lots of other uh, things too so but they're the quite fundamentals of, of any economy um, so in the short term we've got interest rates which influence the exchange rate and speculation. In the long term, we've got consumer preferences, 
national income and equality of purchasing power. So we're going to look at uh, the short term first, interest rates. Now, a country, oh no, we'll start with an investor. If I want to invest my money um, somewhere in the world, where obviously I look for the place where I can get the most uh, growth, most profit. If I'm looking to invest, I'm looking for the most profit. Um, and first, I want political stability because I don't want uh, to invest in a country that's, you know, the economy could go crashing down or, you know, the government could nationalise everything and take my money. And so political stability is very important. You know, political stability, we've got a government that's continuous and, and got good control uh, over the economy. And then I'm looking for high interest rates. So if, if I know the country's stable, the, the politics are stable, uh, I'm looking for high interest rates, aren't I? If, if I see the interest rates in Italy are 2%, and in England they're 5%, it's a good idea for, for me to put all my savings in England. And so this is how governments control the exchange rate. Often they, they, if they want a high exchange rate, they'll put the interest rates up in the central bank. So the central bank puts the interest rates up, um, which has a, a knock-on effect in, in the commercial banks, they put theirs up too, and then all the money moves to, to uh, that country. And obviously the demand for that currency goes up and the value of that currency goes up. Or alternatively, if they want the currency to go down, they can reduce interest rates and then investors will sell whatever currency that is, and put their money somewhere else, and the currency will go down. So this, this interest rate is a useful instrument for governments to change the exchange rate. In the past, yeah, in the past Italy had a very unstable political system Every year, the government there was a government crisis. It collapsed. Um, you know that nothing was was the program. No political program was put into effect, or, or not many reforms. We say big reforms were, were done. Changes that were needed weren't done, etc. To compensate that political instability because they needed, Italy needed a, 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 you know, a reasonably strong currency. They had to have very high interest rates um, to attract the money because often investors, investors wouldn't, uh, would avoid, would avoid a currency if they thought, you know, the, the political the political system wasn't working very well. Um, and there wasn't stability. Uh, the big problem with this is obviously the money goes into the banks. With high interest rates, it means the money comes out of the system. If I want to start a business and I think I can make 5% uh, profit on, on what I invest, by starting this business, but the interest rates are 10%, what's the point? I just put it in the bank, there's no risk I can earn more. So it's dangerous to have high interest. At the moment, interest rates are very low. Um, and so uh, the, the money generally can go into the real world uh, where where they can create jobs. Remember, you know, if the money all goes into the banks, we're not creating jobs. 
uh, a lot of the wealth ends up going around the financial system instead of building factories, etc. So this this wasn't a good situation. Okay. Another short-term uh, influence is international speculation. Now, people buy and sell currency because the, the values move and so they can make a profit. If the, if the value of a currency is very low and I buy it and then it goes up very high and I sell it, I've made lots of money. And you get, you know, speculators buying and selling currency, making fortunes, absolute fortunes, just for this, this uh, activity. Now, if we look at uh, the speculation, we try to think, is, is it a positive thing? Um, there's two ways of looking at it. Some economists say uh, it is positive, or should we start with the negative? Some say it's, it's not po uh, positive because it actually moves, it, it makes uh, more oscillations of value. So it really exaggerates the value. If a currency is going up, maybe more and more people investors, speculators, buy that currency and it goes up even higher. Or if it's going down, more and more want to sell because it's going down and it, it just goes down even f further. So um, it, some the negatives say it exaggerates the movements and creates a very unstable currency. Um, but some economists say actually uh, it does the opposite because those speculators, intelligent speculators, when it's going up, uh, maybe they sell, thinking, oh, it's gone up, I'll sell, and that bring it down. And when it's going down, they'll buy and it will bring. And, you know, uh, so they say it actually removes the oscillation, keeps it stable. But I think we can all agree that it just depends on the speculators, doesn't it? If they're very stable in their behaviour, um, the currency will be stable. If they're, if they're not too exaggerated, uh, if they're, they're, they're selling and, and it becomes more and more and more selling and, you know, uh, confidence collapses, uh, then they're not a good influence at all. So economists differ, but we can agree that it just depends on the speculators themselves, how they behave. Uh, why do we need stability of... Oops. Of... A currency it's, it's really important to have stability of a currency because if I'm a business person and I want to build a factory in China um, I've got I've got to have a 10-year plan you know the Tesla factory in America they're building a, a, a factory of electric batteries um, and it's taking years to develop and if if they start a project with a 10-year plan and, you know, things are moving all over the place, the currency is going all over the place, they can't make a plan because they things become too unpredictable. Um, they need predictability so they can make a plan and can have some certainty over what the value will be in 10 years of the currency. Um, so businesses need to, to make long-term plans, so they need to know what things will look like and that things won't change according to very unpredictable movements and exaggerated movements in the value of a currency 
or even in political stability, you know. So businesses really need stability. Now, if we want to see how exaggerated this financial sector, how much movement of money exists in this financial sector, this should open our eyes. Uh, we've got some data here that is quite uh, incredible. In 1973, <coughs> every $100 exchanged for commercial reasons, for every $100, 600 were exchanged just on speculation, just on buying and selling of, of money. Now that sounds incredible, but in the 1990s, <laughs> It goes up to 5,000 and we can see how, you know, the, 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 this financial economy, this financial sector uh, has gone really to an extreme um, and that's in the 1990s. So now uh, it, it would be even more exaggerated. And that probably, I mean, we did. We can we can say the last find the last crisis that started in two thousand and seven in America was a financial crisis, uh, and it moved all around the world. Um, so the real economy worked. Uh, so I think things are changing. Uh, People are questioning politicians about, you know, the financial world and regulations and, you know, even the European Union has, has come up with some mechanisms to control speculation in, in, in different things, not just, not just buying and selling of currencies, um, in a lot of other ways. The whole financial world is being questioned or has been questioned over the years because of its problems and because it's become very exaggerated.